A girl woke up to find a disgusting thing stuffed in her mouth. She instinctively reached for it, but the collar was locked tightly around her neck. Yoga Pants looked around in horror to see a woman squatting opposite her, who was in the same predicament. However, Crystal wasn't as panicked. She took a pin from her badge, rubbed it on her hair to generate static electricity, and then placed a leaf on the water to easily determine the direction of the deep part. By the time they reached an open area, not only women had collars in their mouths, but men were also biting the same thing. In the middle of the lawn, there was a wooden box. A man, oblivious to the danger, walked over and picked up a crowbar next to it. As he was about to forcibly open the box, an old man behind him warned that it might be a trap. However, because of the dog leash in his mouth, he didn't hear clearly what the old man said and turned around to continue prying open the box. Seeing this, the old man ran away and yoga pants also hid behind a big tree. When the box was opened, everyone held their breath, fearing that the man might accidentally be swallowed by a monster. But the next second, a neatly dressed pig walked out of the box, a dramatic scene that relieved everyone. Only the man closest to it vaguely saw something else inside, which tensed everyone's nerves again. The man slowly reached into the box and actually grabbed a handle. There were various weapons and equipment laid out. Seeing this, the others ran towards the armory, only Yoga Pants found a paper bag nearby with a key inside. Yoga Pants called the trucker in front and actually managed to unlock the collar. They cooperated in releasing their bonds and then began to distribute weapons. At this moment, Trucker came over and thoughtfully disengaged the safety on Yoga Pants's pistol. Just as Yoga Pants said thank you, an accident happened. The terrified Trucker didn't dare to stay and quickly moved. Another woman was hiding in the wooden box. She pointed towards a bunker on the opposite side. And Trucker finally saw the enemy's position. But then a man with two Gatling guns charged over. Seeing this situation, Dead Sexy ran in the opposite direction. And the bullets fired didn't actually hit her. As Dead Sexy was about to escape into the jungle. Just when Trucker thought Dead Sexy was also dead. He heard Dead Sexy's cry for help. Trucker braved the storm of bullets and ran over. When he arrived at the trap, he quickly lay down. Fortunately, Dead Sexy wasn't hit in a vital part. But as they were escaping, Trucker stepped on a landmine. At this moment, the remaining people desperately ran towards the forest. But a metal barrier blocked the way for some. They took off their clothes, placed them on the wire mesh, and climbed over. But when it was Target's turn, an arrow flew towards him. What's that? Hurry. Oh, sh**. Arrows. No. no. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Come on. Target actually gave up running away, raised his pistol, ready to fight the enemy. While the others turned and ran, Target staggered and fired wildly. An arrow flew over his head. But Target wasn't cowardly. He hadn't even seen what the enemy looked like yet. The three who had just run away followed a path to a road where there was a convenience store. After entering, Staten Island nervously began searching the house. And only after confirming that there was just a shivering old couple did they lower their guard. They first blocked the main door with shelves before asking about the situation. But Miranda said this was a small island and rarely did strangers come. Staten Island asked Miranda for a phone to call the police. He himself couldn't figure out his current location and could only ask the police to track the phone number. Unexpectedly. The person on the other end of the call readily agreed, which made Staten Island wonder when the police had become so easy to talk to. They thought they were about to be rescued. Big Red let down her guard and started eating, but in the next second, she seemed to be choked. Her complexion grew worse, and then she foamed at the mouth and fell to the ground. It was then they realized Big Red might have been poisoned, but it was too late. The pop couple put on gas masks and threw a gas bomb. Turning out Miranda and Pop were also hunters. Pop kicked the gas bomb towards Vanilla Nice, letting him breathe it into his heart's content, while Miranda began to tidy up the scattered goods and then opened the exhaust fan. After cleaning up the bodies on the ground, everything was back to normal. The next round of hunting was about to begin again. At this moment, a voice came through the walkie-talkie, telling Miranda that a prey was slowly approaching. Miranda stood by the window, staring out and once again disguised herself as a cashier when she saw someone coming. Crystal came in without too much panic and asked for a pack of cigarettes to calm her nerves. She pulled out a $100 bill from her trouser leg. While Miranda was making change, 
Pop secretly gripped that gun, but the change Miranda gave out revealed a flaw to Crystal because she was given one dollar less. <laughs> This was the first woman to counterkill a hunter. Crystal calmly opened the cigarette pack, which was actually empty, and she found the three bodies in the storage room. Further confirming her judgment, Crystal armed herself, then took off her coat, holding the gun, and walked out of the convenience store. There was a truck parked right outside the door. As she was about to drive the truck away, she found a wire on the handle, the other end connected to a bomb. At this moment, a hunter's accomplice's inquiry came through the walkie-talkie, and Crystal lay in ambush in the bushes. Before long, a drone flew over, but it hadn't seen the situation inside the house before it was shot down. Crystal instantly became alert because the person on the walkie-talkie must have realized something had happened to Pop. Gary, who fired the shot, also came out at this moment. He was also interested in the truck in front of him, seeing Gary was about to get blown up. Crystal got up and kindly reminded Gary there was a bomb under the truck, and Gary then put down his rifle to cover their tracks. They walked to the railway because following the tracks was their only hope of escape. But as they walked, the sound of the railway announced an approaching train. Crystal knew the train was coming. They planned to use the train slowing down at a turn to climb aboard. Crystal jumped onto the train first and also pulled Gary up. At this moment, sounds came from the front of the car, revealing a group of stowaways hiding inside. Speaking in a language they couldn't understand, but Gary doesn't believe them. It was too coincidental that the only open car had a group of men and women. He gave the other party three seconds to admit their identity, or else he would break their third leg. But just at the last second, the train suddenly stopped. They had encountered the border patrol team. Faced with the dogs barking chaotically, the group could only obediently get off the train. Gary, believing his American identity should grant him safe passage tried to convince the commanding officer to send him back home. He mentioned they were being hunted, but due to the language barrier, the soldiers ignored Gary. Meanwhile, the refugees walked over. Did you hear him? Did you hear- Did you hear him? This is- that, That's- That's bullshit! Crisis Mike, pretending not to understand, once again slipped past the soldier's inspection. Gary was completely bewildered. He knew Crisis Mike was a hunter, but exposing him could mean death for everyone. Crisis Mike promised that as long as Gary kept quiet, he would let them leave early, only to hunt them down later. Unbearable. Gary, fueled by anger, lunged at him. A grenade fell out of Crisis Mike's backpack. Gary picked it up and stuffed it into Crisis Mike's pants. Seeing this, everyone ran for their lives. <laughs> After the chaos, Crystal and the refugees were detained together. They were in a refugee camp, and Crystal, without a passport, could only share her story in front of an officer, where she met Don. However, the officer didn't believe their hunting story and treated them as if they were delusional. It's not long before Oliver from the embassy arrives and Don tells him about the hunt. Through their incessant talk, Crystal remained silent. She stealthily grabbed the handle by her side and lifted her feet. Something is... Instead of fleeing immediately, Crystal reversed the car over Oliver's head, then took Oliver's pistol. When they opened the trunk, Gary's body was inside. Women's intuition is indeed frightening. From the conversation of the two men, Crystal had sensed that Oliver was an imposter posing as an embassy staff member. Then, she found a map in the car, clearly the hunter's hideout. Don urged Crystal to seize the chance to escape, but she refused. She wanted revenge. Following the map, they quietly approached the destination, finding several hunters hiding in a nearby castle. As one went to the bathroom, after taking down one, Hey, is this your pee? Crystal intentionally made noise from outside. The people inside became instantly alert. Seeing her pet pig killed, Liberty was devastated. It had been her pet for two months. Thinking the noise was caused by the pig, they all relaxed. Crystal's skill was obvious. She used the corner of the staircase as a cover to beat a group of people running around. Crystal observed the enemy's movements from against the wall. A soldier in uniform was slowly approaching, but his posture clearly showed he was far from professional. At that moment, an arrow suddenly flew towards Crystal. After dealing with the woman, Crystal looked around. The last old man had an assault rifle in front of him, but he was too slow. 
By then, everyone in the castle was dead, and Crystal picked up a sniper rifle next to her. The man who had just been shot was still limping away. With that, Crystal had completely eradicated the stronghold. Just as Crystal was about to leave with her pistol, she was suddenly attacked. It turned out that Dale wasn't completely dead yet. Crystal picked up the pistol, intending to interrogate Liberty about who was behind this. At this moment, Don came downstairs, but Liberty wasn't willing to reveal a single word. What the then, a voice came through the radio, unexpectedly calling out Don's name. It turned out Don was also a hunter. Crystal immediately raised her pistol. You one of them? What? You dropped the gun and answer her. Don. What's going on? You don't have to pretend anymore. She's figured it out. Answer her. Who is this? I don't know who the f that is. Shoot her, Don. They're playing you. They're f you. After eliminating all threats, Crystal also issued a threat into the walkie-talkie. Hearing Athena's taunt, Crystal was enraged to the extreme. She approached Dale. Dale was their tactical advisor, under the pressure of life. Crystal also wanted to vent her emotions. This hunt unexpectedly became her outlet. Seeing Dale refuse to reveal Athena's address, Crystal pressed on Dale's wound. Crystal quietly arrived at the mansion, not realizing Athena was watching her every move. Put your gun in the mailbox. Why the f would I do that? There's a shape C4 charge underneath the gate. Put it in the mailbox. Clearly. Athena was also absolutely confident and wanted a direct confrontation with Crystal. Obediently, Crystal placed her gun in the mailbox, and the gate slowly opened. Athena was confidently preparing dinner, the mastermind behind everything. She knew the background of each prey, choosing those from the lower social strata who had no family, but she slightly misjudged Crystal. The prey she sought was from the same place as Crystal, but their names differed by one character. This was her biggest mistake leading a wolf from the battlefield into the flock. Crystal seized the dagger first. Unexpectedly, Athena was also quite skilled. Though she had only trained for eight months, her close combat ability was no less than Crystal's. The fall made Athena a bit apprehensive, she slowly retreated but pulled out a shotgun from her backpack. Scared, Crystal ran away. During Athena's reloading, Crystal suddenly attacked again. This series of moves nearly cost Crystal her life. Athena picked up the dagger again and stabbed Crystal in the abdomen, but Crystal didn't dare to stop. She hugged Athena and fell out. This severely injured Athena. Both women were nearly exhausted, yet they still staggered to their feet, fighting from outside all the way back into the house. Athena reached for a meat cleaver next to her, slashing Crystal again. These two heavy blows completely depleted Crystal's combat ability. Athena kept striking Crystal in the abdomen. Unexpectedly, Crystal suddenly hugged Athena's leg. <laughs> This move by Crystal was exceptionally ruthless. Crystal didn't give Athena a chance to breathe and attacked again. When they separated, the blade was already in Athena's abdomen, and she gradually lost her voice. In the end, Crystal lifted up her shirt and grabbed a flamethrower to sew up the wound in her abdomen. After everything, she changed into Athena's clothes, becoming the new mistress of the mansion. The film was quite impressive. Halfway through, it was still unclear who the protagonist was, and considering Crystal's beauty and physique, it's definitely worth checking out the original. Stay tuned for more exciting updates.